Whether you're a pro or an amateur, you'll love. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Danielson, it has been a determined Buckeye defense here today. Right. It's been a combination, Brent. They've been doing everything. Good coverage in the secondary, and then that front seven. They, they've been on a mission up there, and they've been forcing a lot of mistakes by the offensive line, and they've been coming, coming, and coming. Yeah, I've, I've felt it before. <laughs> Forcing a lot of tough throws and bad throws from Drew. Breeze fires on the slant incomplete. And again, you can see the contact, contact by the secondary. David Mitchell, number three, was right there that time. Mike Doss, Derek Ross, Nate Clements, Donnie Nicky. We've seen them all. Yep. They've all been doing a good job, and I think John Tenuta and Freddie Puggins, the two defensive coordinators, have done a good job of emphasizing you got to hit only 87 yards. When you throw the ball as much as Purdue has, only 87 yards after completions, that's huge. Second down and 10. Time. And that time, now it could be taking its toll as the freshman turns. Standiford with Clemens closing in quickly. And you can see how the accumulation of hits by the defensive back starts to take its toll. And Purdue really misses Vinny Sutherland coming up here on this third day. He does. Day. Right, we have a report that he went to the locker room, and uh, you can see it. The Purdue receivers, I also feel, Brett, they feel the pressure of what's out there. Pat Rose Bowl sitting out there. They know they have to win this game. Ohio State's been in this position before. Green's only 8 of 20 here in the second half. Needs 10 yards. Needs to get to the 15-yard line. On his time, throws. Yes, a grab. A beauty. South Morelli's skies and pulls it down. First down. As big a catch as Peru has had. 16 yards by Morelli. Morelli's the walk-on transfer from Butler. Came here. Joe Tiller said, we'll let you walk on. We don't think you have much of a chance. Well. It's exactly what they needed, a big catch from the receiver. Morales gave it to him. Jack, what about Benny Sutherland? Well, quickly, he tweaked his knee, but that's not the reason he's out. He started to get severe cramping. They've taken him inside for an IV. The Boilers from the nine-yard line with first down. Breeze to throw on first down, and on the slant, Morales again inside the five-yard line. And now they're in that situation where Breeze can run the quarterback draw if he wants. Really good job. All quarterbacks, if you're a young quarterback or you're teaching the passing game, throw the ball low over the middle. Your receivers will love you. They catch it, they fall down, and they don't get a mouthful of helmet. Ash, Deshaun Johnson about that. Deshaun said, hey, throw the ball to me a little earlier, please. And that's his 16th 300-yard game passing. Second down and goal. And movement. That'll cost Purdue five yards. Brandon Gorin, and perhaps the tight end, broke the snap count, and it's a costly five okay. yards down here. On the uh, offense. Joe Tiller knows, though, that trailing by 10, if they don't get the touchdown down here, obviously on fourth down, he'll go for the field goal. Now, yep. now, now, now there's a fellow who's real nervous. Chewing some ice. No, it's just, you know, Joe's He's been got here. got ice water in his veins, doesn't he? Right. They're back now on that nine-yard line. And it was a bigger mistake than five yards because the Ohio State secondary was discombobulated. They were really out of position. They are again. They haven't been for long, though. Here's the quarterback drop in the nine, and this won't do it. You can smell it coming, folks. And if we can smell it up here, I guarantee you those big Buckeyes can. And Joe Cooper was closing in fast. He's been praying that Mr. 15 will take off. Well, they always say if you're going to talk, you got to walk. And Joe Cooper's walk today. That's what his coach asked him to do. And I think his teammates are trying to bail him out, too. Third and goal. The one thing he cannot afford here is an interception. They must have at least the field goal. Breeze knows it. In trouble. Waits. He's got to throw it out of the end zone. Adams, touchdown. Standiford. Oh, my.
The drought is over. Drew Brees finally has a touchdown pass against Ohio State. He has nicked every Big Ten team for at least one, and this one could not have come at a bigger time for Purdue. And Dorsch closes the Boilermakers to within three. Very subtle. Watch Drew Brees fake the quarterback draw. He goes up to the pocket, tries to draw coverage, and then he's just trying to buy time. Please, somebody open up a safe throw to the back. The freshman gets his foot in. What a nice job by Brees adding something to the play. So Stanford gets behind Clements and beats him for a touchdown. Timeout. And returns from the Purdue locker room just in time. His team still trails it by three. And now the Buckeyes are looking for a lift. A 17-point third quarter, and Rambo decides to take a knee and bring it out on the 20-yard uh, line. One more look. Offensive line stuffs him up front. Breeze comes up, doesn't know quite who to throw to, but look at that great footwork. Straddles to the outside and then buys time and finds the freshman at the back of the end zone line and puts it right there. Clements hesitated in the back of that end zone, and that's all that Standiford needed to run to the sideline and catch that pass from Breeze, who thought he had his tight end early, but the Buckeyes had him sealed up. Now a three-point war going on, and it's Belisari's turn. The Buckeyes stay in that base formation, their base eye. Here's the toss. And Sean Phillips was in pursuit, and Combs made the most of it. We check in with Jack Arute. Brent, if you remember, we sat down with Joe Diller. He said before the Michigan game, the concern he had about his team is that they didn't believe that they belonged in big games. When they came from behind to Michigan, he said, hey, that was the turning point. Now my guys believe that they belong in a big game. He is certainly having to talk to his players now and remind them that they got to come from behind and believe that they are where they need to be. They lost heartbreakers to Notre Dame and Penn State. Now they're trying to stop Belisari and Ohio State. And before the snap, the penalty flags come down, and there might have been movement on the right side of the Buckeye offensive line. So let's quickly check in with John Saunders. John, what happened to the Fighting Irish here today? Yeah, John, you know, the Irish could wind up 9-2, and two, and we've a pretty good bowl bid before this baby's over. First down and 15 after the penalty against the Buckeyes. Goes for the sideline on Rambo, and he is cut off by Clopton, and Rambo initiates the contact, and no penalty flag. College football on ABC is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. The United States Army, be all you can be. Ameritrade, it's how you get somewhere on Wall Street. And Dell, providing the infrastructure to power your e-business. Good job by Brock Spack that time. He called the defense that uh, invited the checkoff by Belisari. He was checked off, and he switched his zone. Sorry, got good protection that time. And he went back to Reggie Germany. Germany making the play with Landon Johnson yeah, back defensively holding, and holding yep. is the penalty. I think it was Sean Phillips, the freshman defensive end, trying to come around the corner that time on Henry Fleming. The blind side, you mentioned it early with a left-handed quarterback, that right tackle is the guy that sometimes is yanking on those guys. I think, I think it was to the top of the screen out there, coming from the top side, an arm hook, and kind of yanks him down from behind. So Cooper's team now faces a second and 25. They'll probably be patient, try to get about half of it back. Westbrook is in as a running back. 
They've got him. And Westbrook finds a nice running lane out to the 30-yard line, and that pulls him back 12 yards, so they've got about four to go as Stuart Schweiger, one of the better freshmen around, makes the play. Nice job. They ran this into the teeth of the blitz. You see Johnson, number 47, Odom, rush from the same side, and they run the isolation play right into it. Good job picking it up. Not a surprise. The Buckeyes expected the blitz coming off the slot all day. So they got almost half of it back. Now a workable third and 13. Belisari and Lambeau's out of bounds, short of it. Short of the first down. Chris Clopton, the Munchkin. And Sutherland back on the field. He'll return this punt, and the crowd welcomes him back. So much reminds you of Tim Dwight, the Iowa Hawkeye. Went on to the Atlanta Falcons, same type of player. Sander back to punt for the Bucks. Then he slips and now tries to make sure that he's away from the football as it rolls just inside the 10 yard line. Three yards and the touchdown. And I think at one point he had missed five in a row before that. Benny Sutherland back in the game, one of the go to receivers. And they snap it quickly and they hit it out of bounds. At the 26 yard line, Cortland Bullard. Jim Chaney says that we, Purdue brought the bubble screen into football, but that we don't call it much anymore. Well, this was the bubble screen and both receivers to that side with the trips got their block. You're gonna see the ball go out real quickly. Long hand up, now watch the blocks. There's one, there's two, both guys on the ground, and that quickness by Vinny gets around the corner. Cedric Brown is the running back next to Drew Brees. Incomplete as the receiver Morales slipped. Let's go to Jack. Brent, when Drew Brees wants solitude and inspiration, he retreats to a quiet room and sits in this leather chair all by himself. It's the video room for the football squad. Drew Brees reviews video of opponents. Let's hope he got some inspiration for this run. It won't be quite so quiet out there, Mr. Root, right now. With 11.08 to go in 2017, and Drew Brees and the Boilermakers are trailing it by three. Let's see if they don't go back to that tight end matchup with Stratton again here. Second down and 10. Stratton's off the line. They've got him. Cooper, the defender. But it was far from a first down, and a reminder at the end of this game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Here's third and five. Vinny Sutherland is the go-to guy in this situation. Stratton has been today. Stratton has tied his career high with 10 catches. Here's Sutherland, number 14. He's off to the quarterback's right. They need five yards. This is not four down territory under any respect here. But he's got it. And there's his go to guy. And that's his new career high. 11 catches for Stratton. Stratton, an all Big Ten player returning this year. Back. You can almost feel it. You're not quite sure who to go to, so you throw to the guy that's matched up against the linebacker. Bullard has had a long day covering that. He needs help, and you assume that Ohio State will change up their defense and give him some help. First down and 10. Okay. And now it's Lowe back on the field. So Montreal Lowe. So before a sellout crowd, you can see the sun starting to set. The Musco lights are on around Ross Age Stadium. We got 947. It's Big Ten football 2017. And the Buckeyes lead the Boilermakers. The winner in command as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned. Three 
Williams hands it off to low again, and uh, that's a good stop by Kenny Peterson, number 97 for the Buckeyes. It's a very surprising play. I think uh, Kenny Peterson is the nickel rush end in the game. He's in there and makes a stop on a running play. Purdue tried to cross up and run a running play against the nickel front, and all of a sudden, that nickel back comes in, the nickel defensive end comes in and stuffs him. Another third and medium. So on third down, Breeze is 13 of 16. He has been lethal on third down. Got it again. <laughs> now he's 14 of 17, and it is Stratton, defended by Bullard for 10 yards, and Purdue moving the ball. Yes, Jack. Well, Brent, Tim Stratton was in Joe Tiller's doghouse after that come-from-behind victory against Michigan because he handed his helmet off to a buddy to celebrate on top of the goalpost while they were tearing them down. Tiller told him he'd have to pay, pay for the helmet or he'd have to sit out the Northwestern game. Then he got an email that said, come pick up the helmet. It was right underneath the goalpost, and a fan had returned it. Sutherland. Slips in motion. They got a three pack on the left side, and we've got a timeout. So we'll take a break. Threes with a pump fake, fires deep for Sutherland, in and out of his hands. He'd slipped a step past Derrick Ross. Breeze has already thrown 34 completions here today, and that's a season high. He's 34 of 58, folks. He's going right over 60. This was the exact play that was dropped earlier in the game. They faked the hitch to the outside and then try to go down the field with a fake screen to the outside and Vinny kind of skinny and up the sideline. Both times, catchable balls. Both times, no completion. So it's second and 10. Here's Breeze, just in time on the release to Morales as he took a lick. Breeze is really amazing how quickly he can change his sights, find a new target, and then lead the ball perfectly in front. Watch, right, one, two, three, then he finally finds just as he sees him, lets the ball go. That was Clint Wayne, number 90, who hit Breeze just as he was releasing it. And now Purdue faces a third and five. Here comes the blitz. Well picked up. Got it. Sutherland in a foot race. Out at the 25-yard line. That's 15 more yards and a big first down. And Cool and collected now. Drew Brees is driving the Boilermakers. Bunch this time, a little bit of a same twist pattern. You come inside, you go back outside, line up in a bunch formation. It's very difficult to jam receivers in that situation and play bump and run. Who's the go-to guy? You have no idea. When you run a varied offense, sometimes you like to match up with the tight end, and then you go back to him. So this is the fourth time in his career that Drew Brees has thrown 60 or more passes. Go, go. The next one is number 61. It's low, and Wayne jumps right on his back as he comes through the middle of the line. And Ohio State defense continues to stay with the basics. Stop the run first. Don't want to start giving low opportunities to gash into that secondary. Purdue now up to 82 plays in the game, Brent. 52 for Ohio State. Well, Purdue has dominated the second half in terms of number of plays. Second down and nine. Remember, the Buckeyes scored on a punt return. Nate Clemens for a touchdown. And they got him on the slant. Drew Brees to stand up third with Clemens defending him. Here's another big third down. Got it into Sutherland. Foot race, dives, touchdown! Oh, baby! 19 yards, Purdue! Same play!
Chris Dorsch adds the extra point. Purdue leads it by four. 24-20, and Benny Sutherland with 10 catches for the day and 142 yards. Same play to the right side as the first down play. Come in, go back out. A missed tackle by Derek Ross, and that's why those yards after catch can kill you. Go in, come back out, same as the third down completion. Doss slips down, Ross misses the tackle, and there's that speed. Put me right back in the middle of that Heisman you race, bet. too, ladies and gentlemen. Or no leads in timeout. Breeze could be coming to Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. Purdue leads it. They've dominated the second half, and the Buckeye defenders could be gasping for a little error here, Gary. Oh, Ohio State, 19 plays. Purdue, 42 plays. I think it's affected the Ohio State defense. The big punt return, that often happens when a punt return like that. Now the Buckeyes need a lift. And here comes Jonathan Wells out of bounds at the 17-yard line, short of the 20. Time permitting, the 50 car rental postgame report will be coming your way. John and Terry will bring you all the scores and highlights from around the country on a big Saturday. In the big one, Oklahoma, after spotting Nebraska, two quick touchdowns, came back and blew them out 31 to 14. OU figures to jump to number one in every poll imaginable. Yeah, you don't need computers to figure that out, do you? No, sir. First down and 10. Bellasari. Now under pressure, and he's smacked. Fumble! Purdue, I believe, may have jumped on it. I think he was down. Well, at least they're calling it down. I don't know if he was down, but they're calling it down. So a break goes Ohio State's way. Right. John, I think, was very upset that Steve did not throw the football. You can't stop. It's an overloaded line. He ducks down. The ball well, came out almost simultaneously. It's a break. Break for the Buckeyes. As he was rolling, yep. the ball started to fly free, but his knee might have been down. An official might have seen it, and it, it's entirely possible, folks, that that's a very good call. Second down and 14. Now Belisari steps up. Middle incomplete. Reggie Germany had a crack at it and couldn't make what would have been a fine catch. Now it's third and 14, and this is as big a play as Ohio State's had all day offensively. Shawnee Woodward. Woodward, number seven. I don't know if he touched that ball or not, but it was right there in cover for Purdue. The only thing the Buckeyes have going for them also, though, is they do have all three timeouts left. Ohio State is only three of 12. Only three of 12 on third down. They need 14. Belisari incomplete. Missed him. Wide open. So now Ohio State will punt. G.J. Sander back, and here's the man of the hour, Benny Sutherland, with cramps and an injury, took some time off, came back and scored the go-ahead touchdown. Lightning quick, hoping to give Drew Brees and Purdue good field position again. Picks up the bobble. Yes. Penalty flags fly from every direction. Terrible penalty. Sutherland is out of bounds, but penalty flag thrown back by the 35-yard line. You saw it, Gary. Yes, it was Cedric Brown from behind a push. It, was, it really wasn't necessary. There was no way that guy was going to make a tackle. Joe makes a little notation on that. 
Well, take a look here. Purdue's offense. I said they needed help from low. Didn't get any. No get negatives. Got a lot of negatives. Three interceptions. And Ohio State did a decent job of limiting yards after catch, and they stayed in the game. Did disrupt the timing, but when you stay in the game, I think the key point, Grant, was they didn't keep number 15 on the sideline enough. The offense for Ohio State didn't make enough first down. And here is number 15, Drew Brees, bending back down in the huddle. This all began when they were trailing Michigan 28 to 10. That's when this drive for Pasadena switched into high gear. They rallied in the second half to beat Michigan. Blew out Northwestern, beat Wisconsin in overtime. And now they've rallied to take the lead with four and a half minutes against Ohio State. And Lowe working against the clock. And he goes, uh, they keep it winding. He was stopped before he stepped out of bounds. So the clock continues to move. This is the toughest part of the spread offense. Jim Chaney kind of talked about it to us, saying, you know, when we get in that situation with about four minutes to go, what do you do? You want to hold on to the ball. You like to drain time off the clock. Now, I think you got to let number 15 have a chance to keep the drive alive. He's your senior. Get the ball game in his hands. Second down and 12. And Breeze keeps it himself. Takes a lick at the 30-yard line, and you know, Joe Tiller has done such a marvelous job around here. We asked Matt Matrone, the defensive lineman, how would you describe Coach Tiller after you leave Purdue to somebody? And uh, here's what Matt had to say. He's a motivator, for sure. And he he understands what, what the human psyche needs to, to be always hungry. And that he's, always, he's always challenging and stimulating us like that. There's a very good feeling about their head coach around here, folks. He's a very popular figure with players and certainly fans. And that's a football player right there, Matt McCoy. Now, that's a football face, isn't it? That's a beauty. Third down now for Breeze. And they were on him. Intercepted! Intercepted! Breeze can stop him. He does. He knocks him out of bounds. Breeze was the only defender who could knock Mike Doss out of bounds. A disaster for Purdue. The fourth interception of the game, and now the Buckeyes can take the lead with 3:09. That's the fourth interception of the game, and the second by Doss. Joe Cooper is the guy that comes free, number 10, right up the middle. Breeze tries to throw it away, throws a duck, and look what happens. And just before the play was called, Joe Tiller was pointing to his head and saying to, to his offense, think, 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 we don't need a big mistake. And that's exactly what happened. So the drama continues here. Tiller and Purdue had this game completely in control. Westbrook stopped. Second down and goal. And now, Gary, you got to wonder what the Ohio State offense is going to come up with here because they've got to get around. They can't just run this off tackle play against the middle of this Purdue defense. Well, they, and they're in four down territory. I know that. They're down by four points. And one of the things you got to do if you're Ohio State, you know what they'd like to do? They'd like to score on fourth down, is what they'd like to do if they had their choice because they would bleed the clock as much as they could. Now, Belisari is a good runner. If they can get him on the outside, he's a left-handed thrower. They gotta get him some room now. Here's second down, play fake, Belisari to throw! And incomplete, the linesman right there. Rules it was incomplete. And it goes to third down for the Buckeyes, and the clock stops at 2.21. Every Buckeye fan in Ohio right here, or everywhere really, held their breath on this throw. This was almost intercepted. Just a big hand on it saved an interception, and it would have been picked off. That was Ben Hartsock's paw, which knocked that one away from Ashante Woodyard. And now, folks, here's third and goal from the two-yard line. Belisari off that tight formation on the toss play. Westbrook's touchdown! Touchdown! Going for one right now to give them a three-point lead with two seconds.
16 to go. for the extra point. Purdue rushes the 11th man on the field. He's got it. Purdue needs a field goal to tie it, a touchdown to take the lead. 2.16 to go. Cooper's got the lead. If 2.16 with Clopton back. He'll try to give the Boilers some field position. High at the five-yard line. Here comes the Munchkin. Munchkin's got an alley. 30. Out of bounds at the 36-yard line. So down the stretch come the Purdue Boilermakers here with one timeout. And, of course, the clock stops out of first down. Huge difference in the college game. Dorsch could tie it with a field goal. They're 13 of 22. But, folks, I'm going to tell you, overriding everything is the fact that Ohio State has intercepted him four times here today. That ties his career high. Remember, he did that a year ago against Michigan State. But he's got the ball back, and he's got two minutes for redemption. We saw redemption last time against Michigan with the field goal kicker. First down, deflected, it's now second down and 10. I think Joe Cooper knocked that one down too. He's been all over the field. They put himself on the line when he popped off, but he has backed it up here today. Usually in this situation, Fred, I think the deep offense has the advantage because of the pressure, but after you've thrown four interceptions like this, I've got to believe Drew Brees is feeling it right now. Second down and 10. <laughs> Offensive line continues okay. to do a great job. Wide open. Got him. Touchdown, Purdue. Seth Morales. Holy Toledo. to Morales, the most clutch pass I've seen in 10 years of doing college football. There's a penalty flag on the extra point, which was good by Travis Dorsch. Scans the field, knows he has it, and he doesn't miss it. What a play. My heart's pumping. Oh, heart is one of the biggest touchdown passes in Big Ten history. They'll be replaying this one for years. And after he threw it, he went over about the 35-yard line and took a knee, and you could see the pressure just go out of his body. Gary, I want to go back on one thing. When he threw that horrendous interception, he had the presence of mind to get pursuit. He had the angle on the defensive back. And even though Ohio State scored, he banged him out of bounds at the two-yard line. Drew Brees is a great great competitor and last week against Wisconsin he demonstrated it not throwing not running but blocking this is a young man who comes to play football and what a job he has done here today 455 yards yes he's thrown four interceptions <laughs> but how about three touchdowns and 65 passes Well, the Buckeyes get the ball back. Let's not forget that. A minute 55 to go, and they've got all three timeouts left. Here's Rambo looking for an alley. And he's down at the 30-yard line. Now Belisari and the Buckeyes. 
Blitz is picked up. And then Aiken Adele comes in from the side and says, how do you do? Same play that he almost fumbled the ball on last time. Again, Steve does not continue out of the pocket and gets hit. Purdue 31, Ohio State 27. A minute and a half to go. And moments ago, after throwing a horrendous interception, Drew Brees goes to Seth Morales, a walk-in transfer for Butler for the 64-yard touchdown, and Purdue regains the lead. Let's check in with Jack Arun. Partner, we've seen some great ones this year, but none better than this one. Boy, this is a, this is a terrific one. And you were talking about Morales. He transferred from Butler University. And over there, he caught 32 passes for 549 yards as a freshman. But, Brent, he went to his parents, and he said, you know, I want to play at Purdue. He called Joe Tiller. Joe Tiller tried to talk about a transferring. His parents tried to talk about a transferring. He disarmed both parties by saying, look, Aren't you entitled to living a dream? They reluctantly approved his transfer here, and the rest is history. The way this one's going, you better get a story out about Ken Young Rambo. <laughs> a minute and a half, and there was movement. Penalty flag is down, and Belisari is tackled by Sean Phillips. But there was a penalty flag on the play. Aiken and Dell jumped early that time, number 13 for Purdue. Respect fine football game. John Cooper's Buckeyes against Joe Tiller's Boilermakers. Now for the Buckeyes. And remember, they're down 31 27. So, there ain't going to be any field goal here, folks. They got to go for the touchdown. Johnson recovers the fumble. I think the ball hit the guy going in motion across the formation. Shotgun play. As a guy goes in motion right here, I think it hits him as he goes by. That's exactly what happened. Shotcut snap, the receiver doesn't clear on the play, and there's the ball laying on the ground. And that's the quarterback's fault. The quarterback has to give the foot a little later to allow the receiver to clear the center. Now, the handoff, and Montreal Lowe goes to work on the Buckeyes for the 17-yard line. Well, for those of you who may have joined us at the top of the hour, there was a time when it looked like it was going Ohio State's way. Number 10, Cooper, comes in on Breeze, who slips off balance. Bad decision. Here comes Doss. Now look who has the only angle that could save the touchdown. Breeze bangs him out of bounds. Then he comes back after giving up the touchdown, and he goes 64 yards to Morales. And Breeze and Purdue could indeed be headed to Pasadena. Win out, and they'll go to the Rose Bowl. They haven't been there since 66 when our colleague, Mr. Bob Greasy, led them out to Pasadena. And now Drew Breeze and the Boilermakers huddle down to bring the seconds off the clock. The schedule. They go to Michigan State. Remember now, next week, they're idle. They get a big week off to get ready for the Spartans who won today. Then they'll close out right here against Indiana. I will tell you right now, folks, it will not be easy for Purdue up at Michigan State. You, Gary, are the one who told me that. Antoine Randall L. the last week with Michigan State's defense. I think the two corners are as good as any two in the league. They held Illinois to only 10 points today. But I, you got to figure that Drew Brees is going to throw the ball against anybody. 
55 yards passing the ball today. Who cares about interceptions when you put those kind of yards up? Didn't have his greatest day, but the finish, as I say, I'll say again, Fred, the best clutch pass I've seen in 10 years of doing college football. You've been here a little longer, but it, I, I was amazed at the pressure that I felt in this whole stadium. Well, there are our players in the game. Joe Cooper popped off, but he backed it up, folks. But nobody, but nobody made a play any bigger than number 15, Drew Brees, when he went 64 yards to Seth Morales. So Chevrolet gladly makes a $1,000 donation in their names to both Ohio State and Purdue. This place will explode, folks. Joe Cooper. And the belt comes off. When the belt comes off, you know it's over. John Cooper had his team ready to play. Yes, he did. I thought his defense played outstanding. I thought the whole team played with great intensity. But sometimes you get matched up against a guy that's just a little too good. And I think Drew Brees was a little too good today. I, I almost have tears in my eyes. And I, I just, it was a wonderful game to watch back and forth. It was the second time Gary almost had tears in his eyes today. The first game with Northwestern on the volleyball <laughs> that was great. Pulled it out, and next week we'll go visit young Matt Danielson of Northwestern Wildcats as they host Michigan in a big one. Thirty-seven ticks of the clock. Ohio State can no longer stop it. A young man from Austin, Texas, was not aggressively recruited by any of the schools down there. And now he has led Purdue to within two steps, two steps of a Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And one of the first across the field to congratulate Drew Brees and Joe Tiller and Purdue is John Cooper. This, folks, is what they call an instant classic.